Fear does not exist in this dojo. Pain does not exist in this dojo. Um, and something else doesn't exist in this dojo. I can't remember what it was. Uh, fear, pain, and... Defeat does not exist in this dojo. Okay, so today, this is going to be the first basic session I'm having in English. And, and we're going to go through the George Foreman guard control style. This was also used by um, that, that Dutch kickboxer who fought uh, in Thailand. Um, Decker, Ramon Decker or something like that. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. So we're going to work on how to control an opponent's guard and always move on the correct side. If you're moving on the right hand side of your opponent where his hard punches are coming from, you control the hand. We'll do the same with kicks as well. So yeah, check it out. If you're going to learn how to control your opponent's guard, the first thing you should learn are the basics of what you should do. When someone's punching you, you should always move this hand so it's aligned with her other arm, or your hand is aligned with her other arm. This way, you'll buy a millisecond, because she'll have to pull this arm back before she can punch with the other one. And my hand is still here, so it's still protecting me. So if you do it again, she's punching, I go here, my hand is still here. Or, if she's fainting doing a bam bam, I go here, my hand is still here. Or, if she faints her right, she goes here, then punches her right, I go here, my hand is still here. So you should never move further than the right, the opposite side of your face. So, if this hand is on the right hand side, I go to here, that way her hand isn't going to hit me through standing there. But her arm is coming towards my face, and I push it here. And this is directly in line with her other arm. Boom. And it's also close enough if she punches here with the left arm, I can move, realign my hand. But if I do, do the feint and the straight, if I go here, boom, I'm getting hit. If I do the feint and the right, if I go here, I get hit. Okay. <laughs> so when you block these, don't go here, boom. Boom, this is all you need, boom. Okay, another thing is, if you want to use your hands like this, you've got to make sure that you limit your opponent's weapons to only straight punches. I would not be standing in here and trying to parry your arms, because then she would start striking hooks and uppercuts and stuff, and my hands are out here. Then I would tighten up, go for things like these. Um, so you have to make sure you're always forcing your opponent to work towards you to go a bit back. So I'm not standing here, I'm standing just outside her range. So I know she has to step in or move towards me slowly. And if she's moving slowly, trying to corner me, I still have enough time to keep this distance and reevaluate my guard. So I'm keeping my hands here, working like this, and keeping the distance. Okay, another thing you should be aware of is that if you're fighting a southpaw, I'll just switch to southpaw here. What you should do is move on the, your opponent's weak side, which means she's punching, I'll move to this side, which increases the distance between me and the right arm, which means she has to go a much longer distance before she can hit me. She, probably has to realign her stance like that, so that buys me even more time. And it's kind of uncomfortable for her. So that also applies to when you're fighting orthodox people. It's always better to go on this side and that side. And that, it's kind of awkward because as humans, we prefer moving forward and to the left, because the left is the same as moving forward. Moving backwards and moving to the right is kind of awkward. So if I was standing with my right foot in front of me, doing this step is quite comfortable, but standing orthodox makes it a bit awkward because my right leg is moving out, which means normally I would like to punch here, but I have to turn my hip around to be able to parry. Well, you don't have to turn that much, but it's just to show what, why there's an awkward motion there. 
the reason for what, what side you move to is um, basically how us humans are built. And when you stand with one leg in front of you and one leg behind you, this arm is a jab, you can throw the jab, boom, and that's a cross. This is slightly more powerful, but they're both um, directly in line with my face. Now, if I move to this side, she can still jab me. The jab is slightly weaker because her hip gets to travel a bit smaller distance, so she'll be able to, um, what do you call that, um, gather enough force. There's a word for it, I can't remember the word, it doesn't matter. Her cross has to go longer distance and that motion becomes awkward because her hip and her knee is pressing against how much she has to pivot her body before she can hit me, which means she either has to readjust or punch with a weak cross. Now if I move here, now she can still jab me, but it's even weaker now, while the cross, well, she can't really cross me like that. This is way too awkward. She would have to realign if this was an actual sparring match or a fight. Okay, so if I move here, you can stand there, looking that way, right? If I'm standing here, this jab is just ridiculous. You wouldn't jab anyone like that. The best thing you could probably do here is a back fist. Boom. But still, this isn't a very efficient punch and it's nothing I should be worried about. She's the one who has to be worried and has to realign her stance. And when realigning, she's telegraphing and I can tell what she's doing. And as she realigns, I can start moving somewhere else. Um, okay, now moving to the other side. This is a cross and it's as powerful as it gets when she's aligned towards me like this. Now, if I move here, it becomes a bit weaker. And if I move here, it becomes a jab. Now it's a jab. And if I move here, it's still a jab, but it's now it's starting to lose its potential. Now, if I'm here, this becomes a back fist or a jab, meaning I have to move a lot further to the side before she starts losing the efficiency of her arm. This also applies to legs. If I move here, her right leg becomes less powerful, and her left leg, well, it still can kick me with a front kick. She start, she's lost the potential of her round kick, because with the round kick, you need a bit of a space here to be able to gather that potential you need to hurt your opponent, which means if I'm standing like this, I'm not going to be able to kick someone over there. And if I am going to do that, I probably have to like do the do this, scissor with the legs or whatever it's called. And the front kick is still going to work here. Now if I move even further, she's not able to front kick me or round kick me. She only has one option, that's a side kick. And if you're good at kicks, you could probably swap to a spin back kick and her right leg, otherwise, then the spinning kicks are pretty much useless from here. Now, if I move to this side, she can use her right kick, boom, and she can also use her left kick. So, now, so I'm basically in the danger zone, just as much here as here. Now, if I move here, now it's becoming harder to use the left kick. Right kick works, but not as efficiently, but basically, you have to move further to the side uh, before she starts losing her efficiency on the legs as well. So always go on the weak side and this is what Raman Decker did. I explained it previously, didn't I? Don't remember. Don't remember? <laughs> we'll just explain it again and if I didn't explain it previously, I'll just cut it before we get to this part. Okay, so what Raman Decker did, when he was a tag kid, he would be fighting like Tyson or like um, Mickey Ward, kind of, uh, except for adding a round kick at the end instead of a hook or an uppercut. But when he would go on the defense, he would swap stance if he was fighting someone who's orthodox. And this was because he wanted to move away from the dangerous, like the, the typical Thai round kick. And he wanted to move away from the cross. So when he was defending, he would be moving on this side and parrying. So he basically swapped to a southpaw stance to defend an orthodox stance to attack. It's 
pretty rare. I've never seen anyone else do that, but it's, it's cool. And uh, I get the idea, because it's easier to move on to your opponent's weak side when you're positioned as a southpaw. Okay, so George Foreman, Big George, he was pretty much the god of controlling his opponent's guards. And we're going to go through one of the things he did. There's plenty of variations of these. And the most important thing when doing combinations, training combinations, is that you're never going to use that combination of fight. But if you practice a thousand entries into one technique and a thousand exits out of that technique, you'll definitely use it when you're sparring. It's just not that you, you won't be using that specific combination, but from one or another punch, you'll be able to move into whatever trick technique you're training on. So, this is just an example. You don't have to do it like this. What Foreman used to do, so if she's punching me, right, I'm parrying, I'm parrying, protecting myself, and before the opponent got to punch, he would stop their arm. And what you do from here is up to you. Uh, a variation I like, and I'm very fond of swapping stances. I'll move my right foot to the side. From here on, I'll move my crossing. Do that again, you're punching. Boom, 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 bam. Before she gets to punch with the right arm, if this wasn't one, two, for instance, and I'm doing this. Boom, 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 bam. Before she gets to think what's happening, I'm moving into my cross and I'm moving out of line, which means even if she got to punch her second punch, well, you're, <laughs> punch, you're punching her two punches here. Okay. As I'm moving, bam, I got her because I'm going out of line. And another variation of this, you could just stop the arm, move into an uppercut, but you have to make sure the person is about your height or shorter. I would not try this in someone who's taller, because that person would be too far away. Uh, another variation, this one's kind of tricky. You punch, boom, and the cross is coming, and as the cross is coming, you slip to the side, boom, and move into the uppercut. If this one's really tricky, I wouldn't advise you to do it at all, because you're going to get punched by the strong arm or the powerful punch. So, but it's not going to hurt to practice it. One or another time you end up, if you do one twos, bam, bam, right, just doing one twos, and you heal it and you move into the cross. You don't even have to do it the way I showed it, but the thing is, if you catch it, she kind of helps you to get this uppercut, so you kind of use that motion. Okay, um, another variation of just controlling your opponent's arms from a distance, this is also another typical George thing, is to, if you punch the left, you could move straight into the cross, if you're doing the cross guard, which George did, you can control your opponent's arm, boom, just do the one, two, boom, wow. boom, you can Grab it with this, you can elbow with that, you can grab it with this, you can catch it with that, and boom, right? So you can use the cross guard, you can use pretty much any guard to do these. It's a rolling motion if you're punching. I catch it, and I just slowly, slowly, much slower. So as I catch it, I roll with it, and I punch. I don't go very far, I go as short as possible, just to make sure this hand, don't be... <laughs> Be like that. I just go like this, just to make sure she's not able to hit me. Boom. And as it comes, I go with the rolling motion and punch. Uh, yeah, as I said, you can do from the cross guard, which is a difficult guard. It's kind of like this one, but not fully. And it's kind of like this one, but not fully. It's here. And you can use your elbow a lot and this hand if you're punching. Any. You can elbow the arms. Catch the arms, and if it's coming to the body, you just tuck down with your arm. Boom. If you do the right hook, as I tuck down, she punches my elbow. So if it's a hard punch, it'll probably hurt her more than me. And the, the, uh, the disadvantage of using this scar is basically that your body is open, and if she's kicking and punching at the same time, you're not going to be able to protect yourself, which makes it a less convenient guard for kickboxing. But it is one of my exit go-tos. Whenever I'm in danger and I feel like 
there is a hook, powerful hook or powerful something coming to the head. I just cover up and try to move to the side. I'll, I do this as well sometimes. But yeah, let's do the combination again. So she's punching one, twos, boom, 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 boom. Before she, she's able to punch me, I catch it. Or boom, 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 bam. The uppercut. Or boom, boom, there. And there's obviously more variations if you're punching. You could grab the arm, basically. What I do, I parry it, but instead of just staying here, I move forward, getting her off balance, then up her time. So if you're punching, boom, just keep on punching. Boom, you can just do the jab, just the jab, it's fine. Boom, I'm parrying it, and when I'm ready, I kind of move forward and get her off balance. How legal that is, I'm not sure. I scratched with my phone man. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> How legal that is in boxing, I'm not really sure. But uh, look, you're gonna get a couple of warnings if if the referee even bothers giving a warning before you're deducted a point. Because basically, I don't think you're allowed to grab like this. But there's a thin line between cheating and being smart, and just be smart, do it a couple of times and you're not going to get de deducted for it. And we can show that last one one last time. So you're jabbing, boom, boom, boom. Kind of sloppy, but that's the essence of it. Get the arm, slide down, get her off balance, up your coming. We're going to work on the same thing, but when it comes to hooks. So if she's hooking, normally, most fighters or more, most gyms will teach you to do this if you do the right hook. And they teach you to move away from the punch and shield. You could also do it with a step. You hook again. I'm stepping out and shielding. Now, this is good in its essence as a last resort because what I'm doing here is that I'm moving out of her center line, which means the further I get here, the weaker her hook is. So when she's hooking, I'm moving out of her center line, I'm shifting my weight this way, as that hand hits me, I'm absorbing that energy over a long distance, a long distance where my hips are traveling like this. Right, but the disadvantage of using this is that when I do this, it's more likely that I'm off balance than she is, and she can move into her next up attack. So, Whenever you're fighting, you should always think who's in balance, who's controlling the weight, and who's controlling the rhythm and the, place, uh, the placement in the ring. So what I would prefer to do, if I'm able to see that hook coming, well, if you can slip under it, dip under it, that's probably the best, but an alternative is to move in and I go for the wrist. I don't want to stop her by the knuckles. I want to stop her by the wrist. Do that again. Boom. From here on, I can move into a hook. I'm also the one, if you do, sorry. I'm also the one controlling the weight. My weight is forward. I just stopped her motion as she was pulling that way. This part of her body started pulling her in the opposite direction, which means her weight isn't as well dis distributed as mine. Mine's better right now for this scenario, this situation. I'll move into the hook. Bam. You could do this from the other side as well. But when you do this from this side, you should move further forward. And uh, because the left hook is a bit further back, while the right hook is, you know what I mean, same with the jab and the cross, the cross has a better reach. So when this comes, you should move a bit further ahead, and I'm controlling it from the wrist, not from the knuckles. Boom, move into a hook. Okay, but there is a different variation of it, a bit riskier, possibly, depends on how good you are at using it, but basically, instead of moving forward, which is in itself a bit risky, because if you get caught, you'll in increase the impact, you could stop the punch as if it was a straight punch, boom, by stopping it like this, again, yeah? boom. But what's important here is that you don't move straight to the side, because then you're going to get hit, and you don't move straight forward, because then she might be able to force it through as a cross, do it again. Boom. Go, go more forcefully. Boom. Right? She can force it through. 
So what I want to do is move exactly where her hook is. Stop there. So her hook is coming here. I want to go out same place and punch her arm, or her hand. Boom. Again. Boom. Boom. So in essence, all I'm doing is stopping that arm. Do it again. Boom. And I can move into the hook. Now I step forward. That wasn't on purpose. It's just I practiced the other version more. So stop the arm and a long hook. Stop the arm and a long hook, or sorry. Stop the arm or step in. You could do that as well. There's no rules in martial arts, it's just tons of variations. You could do the same on the other side. Remember to move in, in the same path the hook is coming from and not straight to the side and not straight forward. You have to move where the punch is coming from. Okay. Um, so when you practice this, it's important that your opponent, your partner, isn't hooking here if you start kind of missing on purpose. No, no, <laughs> do like this. Oh, okay, so yeah, because you're missing on purpose. Then I'm blocking something out here. No, yeah, do like that. And then if she goes for an actual hook, yeah, she's going to hit me. So what I want to do is make sure she's hooking me. Good. And now hook again. Boom. There. Again. Boom. Right? The other arm, I'm going to make sure she's hooking me again. Good. And boom. The other arm. Boom. Good. So make sure you're practicing this right. The same principle we use on how to defend the hooks applies to round kicks as well. So if she's kicking a right round kick, I could do the whole shielding, moving out of her center line, which means moving outside her hips. That will reduce the power from her kick significantly if you're kicking. And it's not like with the hooks, where if she's hooking, and it's a powerful hook, even if I reduce it significantly, I'm the one off balance, which means if she moves into her next attack, she's the one controlling the fight. Here, she's standing on one leg, so in that sense, she's actually the one who's kind of off balance, not me. But is there a better way or a different way of doing this? Yes, there is, obviously. There, there always is. So, very much how we did with the hook, that we punched it, we'll be doing the same thing. And I will actually afterwards explain why we're using this type on the legs and the other kind on the punches, but you could swap them. Um, if you're kicking, I keep this arm here as a shield, just like this one, but additionally, I punch the leg with my hand. And I'm trying to make sure that that leg hits both hands simultaneously to distribute the force. Boom. Again. Boom. But you don't want to do this, because if she's kicking, boom, you get hit. Or if she's fainting a double round kick with the right leg, I go down and the other one hits me. So you always want to keep one arm home, and you could actually move low with this. If, she, if it's a low kick, you move low, but she's fainting and she hits the other hand. That's fine, even if you fuck it up, it's a, it's a direct, uh, direct uh, round kick to the head. Okay. You fuck up, you still got this hand here, and you can start moving your shoulders. Fair enough, it didn't go as well as you wanted to, but you're still protected. Right. So, you kick. Oh, here and I do this when someone's low kicking, not low kicking, body. Okay. I go low with my body, then move on to my next attack. I'm not sure if I would advise you doing that because I'm a bit afraid a lot of people might just do this. Boom, and move right into a knee. I try to keep my weight in center line when going low. To, uh, yeah, you're kicking the body. Kick again. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's fine. Again. Boom. But I try to stop that leg. This way, if I'm miscalculating a bit, I'm not getting a knee in my face. I'm in center line. But I move down and up. You can do a different variation, but this one's kind of better and riskier. It, it depends on how you think about it. If you're kicking, you could. Your body? Uh, my body. You could either move this way and come over with the cross, or you could move this way and come over with the hook. The danger here is that if it's a high kick, yeah, it's going to hit you. 
So you've got to make sure it's someone who's not able to kick high. It's, you have to evaluate the scenario, but while doing this one, uh, body, while doing these two, you're more positioned for a more powerful punch, the other way, the body again. Here, boom, I'm more positioned for a powerful kick. This one's safer though, because if it's high, uh, if it's high, I do have the additional time to bring my shoulder up to save myself. And we should probably move on to the shoulder. In general, in boxing and kickboxing, you want tons of backup plans. And you don't want to go thinking about them. They should be in your muscle memory. Now, uh, there's tons of ways of doing this. I'll show you what I prefer. And if we just move on to some of the previous stuff we did. For instance, say I was trying to parry a catcher arm or something. And she's fainting, and there's a hook uh, cross coming or a hook. I do a hook. If it's a hook, this isn't going to help me anymore because I let her get too close, and she's able to hook me. If I was further out, or maybe she's moving in, if I was able to move out, that hook isn't dangerous anymore. But, but say the ropes are behind me, or I wasn't quite uh, quite paying attention, and she got the jab and she moved towards me. The hook is coming. Having this arm here, just do it again, isn't going to protect me. So, and say this arm was low for some reason, what I can do is move the shoulder up. And I use this all the time. Whenever I mess things up, the shoulder comes up. You can use it from the other side. Say she went to jab and a hook, and I went too far out, I can do this. Or for instance, I was trying to catch her arm before she punched, and she went for a hook. Boom! Move the shoulder up. Now, you can also use this for kicks. Say, I did do the, uh, do, do the round kick to the body. Mm -hmm. Say, I did do this. And it was actually a double or a round kick to the head. I can go to the shoulder. It's a lot more difficult from this one than if you do it again. If I go here and it's high, I could already be in that position. Do it again. And Cross. Didn't even hit me. <laughs> no, it was the point. Yeah, but the point being, I could already, as she's kicking, move into this position. Because now, she's going to either hit my back or my arm, definitely not my head. Then I cross over. So using the shoulder is an essential thing when it comes to boxing and kickboxing, especially when you're messing things up. So, to show you another variation of it, for instance, if someone's front kicking me, if I'm able to just front kick, I prefer doing that. Because I get them off balance and her body is pointing that way. Now what if it was uh, a question mark kick, meaning she goes uh, from, from a front kick to a round kick. So you go from uh -huh. to the left. And I'm going down here, and that leg comes around. And let's say this leg, this arm is low for some reason, right? You do that again. I'm going there, and before I'm able to parry, you go for the round kick. You're just thinking, just lift the leg, okay, don't do so the kick. Okay, so I'm going to teach. I'm slow with this one, I move my shoulder up to protect my face, the round kick is to the head. So, uh -huh. I got my hands low or something, that kick comes, I mess it up, I go here. Right? And, you can do it with the other one. Mm -hmm. Say I use the same parry, I should, probably shouldn't. I probably should do this if I can. But say I do this and that one's coming around, I move my shoulder up. Or if you're kicking again, I try to use this parry, I move the shoulder up again. So this shoulder, it's, it's, it's a last resort, but it'll save you tons of times. And we could probably do it on if you do the hook and I, uh, right hook. I do this. If I mess it up, I don't align it correctly, do it again, and I go here, I can try to get my shoulder up. So again, this will save me. And you can practice this by doing simple combinations. For instance, you're doing the left, right, slip, then a right. So she's practicing left, right, slip, and right again. Left, right, slip, and right. Now, I could start practicing, do the left, right, no, I'll do it, okay. Boom, boom, and punch me in the head, right? Mm -hmm. 
I let her punch me in the head. She's not going to punch hard. She's just going to hit me nicely. Okay, we'll do that again. Boom. And then, boom. I'll try to protect myself with my shoulder. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. As a last resort. And this is how you learn it, by just practicing various combinations. Do a couple normally, and do a couple where you let your opponent hit you in the head. Obviously, the other opponent isn't supposed to punch through and knock you out. Uh, then, on the last few ones, we swap where the exercise isn't about doing the combination, but being able to protect yourself properly by using your shoulder. Can you swap these defenses? from round kick to hook and from hook to round kick. So basically, at least when it comes to the hooks, I could essentially, if she's doing a right, right hook, I could do this. But what I have to be aware of is that, unlike kicks, when you're standing on one leg, it's not very likely she's gonna kick with the other leg straight away. With punches, there's definitely another punch coming from here. So if I go here, I should be able to protect myself somehow by pulling up my shoulder, or elbow to do that again. Faster. You just go one, two. I should be able to protect myself again. This also applies to, for instance, if she was jab, uh, jab hooking, and I try to catch the jab, if there's a hook coming, you could just lift your elbow, boom, and the jab won't have a path hitting her face, even if, if you swap to south pump. And you do a jab hook from there. I'm trying to catch the jab, I can just lift the elbow again. Boom, boom. And here's a little secret. And um, if you swap to orthodox, when catching a right arm, most people prefer, uh, sorry, left, left arm, catching it here because they can simultaneously catching it, punch a straight punch. But when your opponent is a southpaw, don't catch it with this arm, catch it with the left, because then you can cross them. It's a much harder punch. So when someone's punching from there, catch it with this arm, and then cross. You could probably do that if you, if you throw a cross from South Pond. You could, uh, a cross. Oh, a cross, sorry. You, you could probably try to drag it down with this one and punch over as well. Let me try. I'll start experimenting on that during sparring, and we'll see. And I'll make another video about that. Okay, so we're gonna move on to today's topic. All everything up to now has just been an intro, so you know what it's all about, how to protect yourself. You can't do these things, well, this main topic, without knowing all the rest. Okay, so controlling your opponent's guard. And there's tons of ways of doing it. My favorite is in the in-fight situation. I'm much more of an in-fighter. I'm an all-arounder, but in-fight is my specialty. So say, for instance, I was doing a one, two, and then I step out simultaneously grabbing this arm. And what happens is I'm holding this arm. If she's punching with the other arm, she's going to be able to punch but not forcefully, because she's not able to pull this shoulder back and this arm back. And, as I said, I swap a lot of stances when I'm sparring, and this is probably something you should practice when trying to control your opponent's guard. Because when I'm here, and I grab that arm, I get much closer, and from here on, I do another swap. I do, essentially, I do this. If you're standing, uh, there, yeah, perfect. So, bam, bam, right leg moves that way. I grab the arm and I also have my elbow like this. Why? Because if I'm moving like this and I'm a bit slow, she can cross me. Boom. But if I'm moving like this, I'm slow. If she crosses me, hits my elbow. She can hit the body fair enough. You have to, <laughs> not, there's no perfect defense in sparring, but. Most people try to punch in the head and kick you to the body. So I'm moving here, I got this, and as I do this step in, pull out, I drag the arm, getting her off balance, opening her body, and pivoting her body like this. But you can't, you obviously can't do this step like this, it's more like this. 
So, again, one, two, move in, swap, and from here, hook in, or one, two, move in, swap, and kick. So I'm going to show the first one again. One, two, move in, swap, and hook, or one, two, move in, swap, and kick. And I'm not letting go of the arm before I'm punching. So as I'm here, I got the arm. See that? I'm pulling it all the way to make sure she's off balance during my whole attack. You could also do a different kind. As you get here, I'm just making sure she's not able to punch me. I pull it a bit, hook over, hook inside. Then you have to let go of the arm because you want to be able to punch. Okay, there's obviously tons of variations. You could do something as simple as set up a few punches. You can do the one, two again. Boom, boom. Then you step straight out, get the arm, pull it, and kick to the stomach. Just to distract your opponent, control their body, and open them up a bit. Instead of doing the one, two, you could do the jab, and pull, and kick. And again, I'm not letting go of the arm before, oh, I didn't even let go now at all, but before the leg hits. And as I said, there's this thin line between cheating and being smart, so do it until you get a warning, then don't do it anymore. And don't do it too often, do it scarcely. And I'm showing a different variation on this side before we move on to the other side. In an in-fight scenario, I often move into this position, so I control the elbow, now she's pretty smart, she, she, you know, she knows I do this all the time. It's harder if they're tight, like how Malen is, but if they're a bit sloppy with the elbow, which most fighters are, you grab the elbow. From here on, if she's punching with the other arm, I only pull this arm. And then, uh, wait, we should probably go here. And this arm is protecting my body. And this other arm is essentially protecting my face. If she pulls back to uppercut, not like that, with your boom. If she pulls back to uppercut, I either pull the arm or pull myself away. I wasn't able to pull the arm, she managed to pull it out, just do it again. Boom, now just try to pull it out. If she's able to pull it out, that's fine. Move your body away as the uppercut comes. You're uppercutting. Boom. But most people won't pull first. Most people will go straight for the uppercut, go straight for an uppercut, yeah. right uppercut. <laughs> give it all. <laughs> exactly, but give it all, all you got. Oh, it? It's going to get sloppy because I'm holding the other arm, the other shoulder. So, how to attack from this position? You go from this position, you just let go of the arm and the uppercut through. Basically, something like this. And yeah, it's not the perfect uppercut, but you're well protected because you're on the outside of this arm. If I start moving here, she's going to be able to punch me with both arms. As long as I'm tucked in here against her shoulder, she's not going to be able to punch with either arm. So that's another variation of controlling your opponent's guard. You can also just from here, remember this thing I showed? You can go from here, boom. And get your opponent off balance, and from there on, boom, hook, hook, kick, whatever you want to do. Scotty, beam us! The technology today. Okay. Impressive. It's quite impressive. It wasn't like that when I was growing up. <laughs> so, we're going to do a one, two. Now from here on, so basically, I'm setting up two punches which aren't meant to hurt her. They're just meant to, as a setup. You could set up a few before doing this. Bam, bam, bam. And then, um, number whatever, you do a one, two. And from here on, I step in, I step out and push her arm. But obviously, you're not supposed to do it like this. This is just for beginners. When I get here, my feet never touch. They only move towards each other and I swap stances. And so one, two, 
swap, and from here on, I move my body down here, so I've loaded my round kick, so I just move up and round kick. You can do that with the hook as well, one, two, here, and a hook to the body. And uh, one, two, three, but when you're hooking, you probably want to get closer, so you might want to cross like this. It's not a powerful cross, but it's it's meant for getting your opponent, yeah, get her off balance. So come closer. There we go. So one, two, get them off balance. Swap stances and hook to the body. And the front leg hook is more powerful than the hind leg hook. Okay. So, you could do this in a different manner as well. So say you set up a few one-twos, then you go for one, and grab the arm, as always, grab the arm, step in, step out, and pull. I open up her body, then kick. Or, one, two, pull, hook inside. Right, because I'm pulling, maybe it's better if we're standing, if you're standing, yeah, perfect. So, one, two, a couple of times, then I go for grabbing the arm, I pull that, I open her up, hook, or uppercut, whatever you like. And so, the ties do this a different way. The ties, say I do, I want to do this, a Thai person would do like this pivot, I'm not very fond of it, because as you pivot, say I go for one, two, I should probably step, one, two, pivot. There's a lot of weight moving against my body, so it'll take more time before I might find my balance and, and I'm able to kick. Obviously the kick's going to be more powerful, because I'm kicking it from behind. While doing this, boom, pushing the arm, you're always in balance. Because what I'm doing, I'm keeping the center of my weight more or less in the same place. My hips are more or less in the same place. I just reposition my legs, boom, and swap my stance. So I kind of relocate my legs. If my opponent's here, my left leg is right next to them. And from here on, I move straight into a round kick. So I basically go bam, bam, bam. And it's going to be a powerful kick, because you get to charge it. You get to do this. It's the same as, you see the some Thai people do this scissor thing. It's more or less the same as that. So you increase the power of the kick. It's not going to be as powerful as having it back here, but it's going to be more powerful than having it here when you get to charge it up. Okay, we're just going to do a quick recap. So, main thing before you start practicing any controlling of the guard, you want to be able to carry to the correct side, not carry too far, just enough in case there's a second punch coming, your hand is still here, or if there is a faint, boom, your hand is still here, and also, when you got your hands working here, you keep on any straight punch you want, you want to keep the distance, okay, that's good, you want to keep the distance so this doesn't happen, you do the same thing, and I'm still doing go here, and you start punching hooks, right? I'm not able to protect myself against the hooks when she gets too close. Okay, next thing. I'm not sure if the if it was the very next thing, but we'll say it was. <laughs> if you're fighting anyone, you always want to move to the weak side. So if she's punching, in general, I want to move to this side. If she was a southpaw. She's punching, I want to move to this side. Obviously, this is more comfortable, but if you swap your stance, if I move here, she's going to catch me with the other arm. Boom. Right? So I don't want to move into her power arm or power leg. Okay, next thing, protecting against hooks. I could obviously do the shielding, and even if I want to reduce the, its impact even more, I could step outside. I could do this with kicks as well. If you high kick, boom, I can move away. But another way of protecting yourself against the hook is stepping in, grabbing by the wrist, okay? Don't grab them by the knuckles, and then hook on the inside. You do this on the other side, boom, 
Just remember when you're moving on this side, you move straight forward because this has a shorter range. So move straight forward and hook on the inside. Okay, round kicks, you can do the same thing, but you punch the opponent's hand with the other arm. The, basically, uh, your right arm against the right arm, while it, when it's hooks, it's left arm against right arm, or right arm against left arm. So when she kicks, pull here, make sure it hits both hands simultaneously, and from there on, you've probably got your opponent off balance, you move into your combination. Other variations, uh, to the body. I could go here and cross over. I could also go here, hook over, or what I prefer, I keep this hand tucked here and she kicks. Boom! So even if I mess it up, I still have one hand protecting me. Then I move into my combination. Um, same thing on the other side. Remember to use your shoulder to protect yourself. Move it back. So if you mess things up, say I'm jabbing, she parries this to the side, and do the parry to that side, to your right side. Yeah, for instance, just like that. She parries this, and there's a cross coming, boom, use your shoulder. Or if she was painting with the left jab, then another left hook, boom, boom, bring your shoulder up. And you could use this to, uh, to defend yourself against kicks as well. For instance, if she's doing the question mark kick, you can use the hind leg, I think it's easier. So, boom, boom, bring your shoulder up. And also, even if you miscalculate which round kick it was, say your opponent paints a left round kick and does a right round kick, so say I messed it up, I started defending this side and what's coming is a right round kick, don't we? Yeah, I can bring my shoulder up. So, you don't have to kick the left round kick, yeah. just kick the boom. I can protect myself, even if it's to the body. Boom, I can protect myself. I just bring the hand a bit further down. Uh, okay, and the actual topic of the day. So, guard, uh, controlling the guard of your opponent. Bam, bam. When I got, I set up with one twos because that's easy. Everyone understands one twos. So, one, two, I step outside like this, from here on, I grab the arm, grab him by the wrist, don't grab him by the shoulder, because pull, push against me with the shoulder, all you can, right? I can't uh, try to pivot against me, I'm trying, I'm trying to pivot you, this way you pivot back, right? She's too strong, even that despite our weight difference, but if you got him by the wrist, you can pretty much pull against Right? It's much easier. You can also grab him by the elbow if you want to do that. The point is, you need this lever arm. This lever arm helps me. Okay, so I do the one, two. I get my elbow up in case there's a cross coming as I do that. As I'm coming here, if there's a cross coming, I've protected myself. I try to grab onto this arm, pull it as I'm swapping stance. So pull it as I'm swapping, then kick. So. One, two, here, pull, and kick. Or you can do the hook, whatever you like. You can, you can do it as simple as just setting up a few jabs, stepping and grabbing, kicking. So, you can go to the opposite side. We don't have time for the beaming. Okay, I could go to the opposite side, still doing the one, two, right? I set up a hook, so if you don't want to grab the arm because you want to fight clean, you could even set up a hook here, boom, and get on the outside. But I'm pushing the hook through. There's my kick. Or we could do a half of a cheat. As you step in here, you grab the arm and kick. Or do the hooks, whatever you like. If you're doing the hook so we'll get closer, have a bent cross, boom, boom, bah, bah. Mm. Oh yeah, also you can do the Thai version. I don't like it because it's slower. In general, I think it's too slow. It's a good, uh, it's a good evasion though. When you have fighters who charge a lot, I like this pivot. Ooh. 
But uh, it's too slow for a round kick in my opinion. But people are different, our bodies work differently, so if that works for you, definitely use it. Use whatever works for you. Remember, Cobra Kai never dies. Thank you for watching. Happy Halloween. Go out there and kill some COVID zombies. See you later. Strike first! Strike hard! No mercy. No mercy!